This is a partial sample of my collection of the Nissan Venet Cargo headlights and uh, we're here to make these uh, better. So if you're an avid viewer of the channel you might have noticed a few streams a while back where I was fixing the elevator motors for these and we have two working ones ready to go into the actual van. But in order to do that you need to remove the front glass of a lamp in order to actually hook that onto the, the internal reflector. You can't do that without disassembling the light. It's just not uh, possible to get good enough pressure on everything to make it go together. So, since we have to take the glass out anyway, I have a bit of a plan. Because as you might be able to tell on the, on the light that's uh, sitting in the back there, you have a hole where the normal H4 headlamp goes, but then you have a plastic plug where the additional, I don't even know what kind of life that's supposed to be, is supposed to go, and there's nothing there. Now, there's supposed to be a whole reflector assembly and stuff that goes into the models that have these, and I don't have any of that. However, I have figured out a plan, because the size of the hole is perfect for a 12 volt GU 5.3 spotlight. Now since you can get these in 5 watt LED variants, you have a super convenient package uh, to just basically drill a hole and shove in there and you have some extra light. And indeed, we have one that I prepared earlier. So this here is the uh, test in progress. This is one of the 5 watt uh, GU 5.3 lamps. I drilled a hole into one of the lights and just taped it on there. And as you can see it fits perfectly and it's putting out quite a bit of light. That's not bad at all. So the uh, light image you get out of this is a bit weird. It's very wide vertically and very wide in basically every angle. With a bit of, bit of an extra spot uh, going to either of the sides. Uh, so if you compare that to the H4 headlamp, which we can turn on, it does provide quite a bit of extra fill light uh, relatively close to the vehicle and above all off to the side there where there's the H4 is barely putting any of the light out. If it's on high beam, of course, you would not be allowed to use these on the low beam since they have a way too wide dispersion pattern. It would blind everyone coming towards you. But uh, yeah, my plan is to drill a hole on, on two of the lamps, which are going to go in the car. This is just a test lamp from a spare parts vehicle. And uh, I'm going to just hook this straight up to the high beam uh, on the H4 uh, because these lights, they, they run DC just fine as you can see. Uh, they're made for AC or DC, polarity doesn't matter. It's super duper simple to wire up together and since this is a glass lamp, it's going to be reasonably hermetically sealed as well. I don't think we're going to run into issues with moisture getting into these. We are baking one of these. Oh god, that's so horrible. Uh, to loosen the adhesive that's holding the glass on. This should be done in a couple of minutes and we should be able to pry the glass off and uh, have a look inside. All right, there we have a rather nice and warm light straight out of the oven. So let's see if we can manage to break inside this without uh, destroying it like I did the other one. I cracked the glass on that one, which was a bit of a fiasco. Oh. There's a really strong smell coming out of this thing. We are breaking inside. Freedom! So, uh, that went very smoothly actually compared to the last one I did. Uh, the only thing I did was put it in the oven 100C for 10 minutes, well 11 actually. Uh, it could probably survive more than that, this plastic is not 
uh, all that uh, soft yet. So 100, 150 maybe for 10 minutes is gonna work very well on this adhesive, obviously. And it feels as if this is even recyclable. It's still very tacky. So we can probably just shove the uh, glass back on there once we're done. So uh, now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is clean up this area here uh, and uh, coat this in aluminium tape to make a bit of a makeshift reflector just to uh, make the light a bit more focused because it's going to be painting around all over the place here since the light is just spewing light over this and the white plastic is going to diffuse it so it goes everywhere. Uh, just covering this in something reflective isn't going to make a super good reflector but it is going to uh, make it a bit less uh, spewy. It is going to make the light that does bounce around randomly come out in one spot rather than one million. Okay, uh, don't turn it up above 100C. Uh, the plastic can't take it. Not a good idea, so now this one's all melted and horrible. Uh, no major damage though, this is still serviceable. We're just gonna have uh, a bit of a leakage around the rubber gasket around the light there, but uh, it, 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 this isn't hermetically sealed anyway, so it doesn't quite matter. I was lucky with the melting in that uh, the mating point for the reflector are these guys up here and they weren't affected. Uh, where this melted, there's nothing mounted, so it's not going to affect the headlight alignment and uh, uh, the glass maintained the shape of the plastic as a whole. The only little artifact, it's, it's a little bent out of shape back down in the corner there, but uh, that's not an issue. We can still use this, but yeah. 100C is probably your best bet for the top temperature. Keep that in mind if you're going to do this. Okay, so with the melting out of the way, uh, we've come to a point where we need to start drilling for the extra light. Uh, so thankfully, uh, the manufacturing process of these plastic parts have left us with a cross right across here, which marks the center. So uh, it is very simple for me to just uh, take a drill, put it on the cross, and uh, do that. So with a pilot hole drilled, uh, all you need to do is uh, expand it with a normal hole drill. Uh, this is a 44mm, uh, which uh, fits quite well with the 51mm outer diameter of this light. Uh, a fair bit of which is uh, not even active as part of a lamp, so I think those are going to work quite well. And that's the hole. But the light won't fit through. Excellent. All right, and a lot of really tedious taping later, we have something that looks like this. So we have alfoil on pretty much all of the sides. Uh, I'm thinking coverage isn't super important since this is just a patch on a real rather terrible light solution to begin with. So it's just there to cut us a couple of extra percent. Uh, the important part is that you don't have any huge air bubbles around the edges of the tape because that's going to make it fall out if it ever gets moist, uh, which it will. Uh, so I've mostly just been focusing on that. So. Uh, now, basically, all we need to do is uh, mount uh, the new lights and the headlight elevators, put the glass back on and we're going to be done with this. And uh, the way I've intended to mount these is uh, very simple. Uh, I'm just going to put this uh, there, put the light on my not very well centered hole that could have gone a bit better, but I will do that and we'll take my electrical tape and just wrap it because we have a little uh, ledge around there which uh, is uh, rather perfect for just uh, letting you wrap tape really tightly around. There we go. Two full turns and a bit extra. And uh, on this alone, I don't think this light is going to go anywhere. That's properly tight in there. But uh, just to be sure, I've got some uh, metal wire. So I'm just going to use these handy posts that they've moulded in there to wrap this uh, around a couple times just to give it a bit of extra. Uh, 
and that ought to sit there quite well. Uh, I forgot to crisscross on that side, but that doesn't matter. This is not there. Nice and tight, nice springy uh, middle wire. So we can uh, fold this down and uh, be done with it. Do the same thing for the other light. And all that's left to do is get the glass back on. Ah, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That almost looks factory fit. So, there's the other one. Remember to crisscross on that one. Uh, so, uh, now all we've got to do is uh, install the uh, headlight elevators. These are the new renovated fancy units. So, these just pop into this hole somehow. And then you use a lot of brute force to get a plastic thing to pop on that. Like so. That's the reason you have to take the glass out. You cannot do that without just destroying the reflector. Now this carefully turns in place. Uh, this plastic piece is missing on all but this light because they're uh, garbage. Not looking too bad. Not looking too bad at all. All right, and back out the oven it comes, just in for three minutes to warm it up a bit, just to make the adhesive a bit more pliable when we're about to get it back together. Ah, grandma's fresh cookies. All right, so uh, now it's just a question of squeezing this and managing to get the metal clips back on, which uh, actually provide the positive mounting for the glass. So they have an important bit which makes sure it doesn't fall off. So there are four of them. One goes there. And this is going to be interesting because the adhesive is not going to want to get out of the way. Hi, oh, that went very well. Well, that's back together. That went far too easy. Beautiful. Nice and shiny. And with an extra hidden surprise. You can't even see anything's changed from the outside. That's, that's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. Ha, I didn't mind this at all. Let's do the other one. All right, and a quick solder and shrink wrap job later. We have everything wired up. So I've gone for a rather simple dodgy connection solution for this. We've just taken a couple of leads and put them on top of a high beam connector on the H4. Uh, this is because I don't want to solve it or make anything permanent since this is still a halogen bulb. It's going to fail at some point. This ought to make it reasonably easy to swap out the uh, halogen, halogen bulb uh, without having to do too much faffing about with the uh, LED extra. So that's really about it and uh, I went to the effort of setting up the other one ready for a test. So we just have high beam here. Let's engage. Now it's a bit difficult to spot the difference, but uh, assuredly that is an entirely lit up light. And most of the light is coming from the H4 high beam since that still is a 60 watt bulb. But uh, we do have a fair bit of light coming from our new addition. Now you can see, even if we get up and down, the light coming from that is remaining relatively constant, so there's a bunch of light just going up into space from this. It has a bit of a bias towards straight ahead, but not a lot. But if we go to the sides, our aluminium tape is doing a good job because we do have a fair amount of spread to the sides as well without any actual real reflector, uh, reflector to speak of. I don't dare move that. I don't think that's too bad, it looks bloody well stock. And uh, 
and the effect this is going to have is making high beam flashing a lot more intense if someone's being a jackass because the LED is responding so very quick, uh, so very quickly compared to the uh, H4. So turning the high beams on is actually a lot more in instant now. Like you get, first it floods the room with, with a light and then the H4 kicks in and you get the nice focused beam. Like, if I do that, the H4 is barely having time to turn on, but we still get a bunch of light. So that's not bad. That is not bad. I'm looking forward to getting those in the car. Okay, quite a bit of swearing and troubleshooting later. We have the lights installed back in the car and they are shining. And what's more important, if I go inside the cab and flick a tiny green switch, they make a little noise and go up and down at my command. Finally making these headlights legal for road use, which they haven't been in quite a while, and I've just been lucky no one's caught on. However, what's uh, more fun, perhaps, is the fact that we have improved the lights completely. So, I've covered up the extra light right now, and Perhaps you can see, perhaps you can't, but I'm walking around beside the vehicle. And I ought to be coming out in, into the light right now. And I'm about to remove the covers out of all. And then I'm going to retreat back into the darkness. Right the same path I came. And uh, this ought to give you guys quite a better view of me. Because our new LED headlights uh, on the high beam setting provide a huge amount of extra flooding to the sides of the vehicle. And uh, I've had the, the poor fortune to get to test that out uh, with a couple of deer on my test run, but everyone survived, even the deer, so everything was fine. <sighs> now that's it, I'm going to thoroughly enjoy driving around in a vehicle with legal lights and a couple of 12 volt kitchen spotlights in the front. So I'm gonna have to, guys, have to thank you guys for watching and wish you an enjoyable day. Cheerio.